Hey guys, and welcome back to Flatback Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this awesome newspaper effect. Now, this tutorial was a request from one of my students from my Animation Master private Facebook group. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to show you in this video about different ways you can go about creating this effect. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just right click, create a new composition. And this can be around sort of three seconds in length. It's quite a fast effect, so we don't need it to be that long, but you can make it as long as you like. I'm just using 1920 by 1080, whatever dimensions you wanna use for yours. Now there's two ways that I see you can go about creating this effect. One is you can use actual newspaper articles that all have similar sort of titles. So here I'm using the moon landing as a common you know, newspaper theme and I've just sort of sourced all of these different articles that were published at the time that have the word moon in it. Obviously you need titles that all feature the same word because that's what this effect is built around. The other side of this is that you don't need to new use newspaper articles. You could just create titles from scratch. Now this is kind of following on from the last newspaper video that I did. There'll be a link down to that tutorial in the description, but we sort of create your own text. And I'm gonna show you how to do kind of both but I think it looks a lot better if you can use real newspaper articles in my opinion. But as I said, you don't have to do that. Now you will need this paper sort of crumpled paper effect. You can find this by just searching for any uh, royalty free websites, images, just basically searching for it and then dropping it on your timeline. And then I'm gonna grab my first newspaper article here and just drop it on top. And I can just scale this down. So we end up with our newspaper sort of position here. Now there's two ways we can get the texture of the background to sort of show through. One is we can come down here to the blending modes. If yours isn't there, just toggle this down the bottom and then change this to be multiply. And that'll sort of you know, put the two together. You can mess around with the different settings here to kind of get different looks. Maybe darken's gonna work better for you. That'll bring through that texture in the background. Another way and a more simpler way is to add the extract tool and then drag down on the white point. So if you drag down on this, it'll remove that background. And then we kind of just have like a clean basically article that sits over the top. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a new null object here and I want to line my null object up exactly in the center or very close to where that word is that you want to zoom into. And then I'm going to link those two layers to that null so that now we have a scale controller for that layer. Then I'm just gonna create a scale keyframe here at the start and then one towards the end. You don't need too much of a zoom here and you can always readjust this later. Make that easy ease. And now and what I'm gonna do is go into about 19 frames here and I'm just going to select both of those, come up to edit and then split those layers. Drag those next two up. Then I'm gonna grab my next article here, select it. And I'm also going to select this in the timeline here, that one that we just split. Holding Option or Alt on my keyboard, I'm then going to drag it on top. It's going to replace that layer. Now you may have to reposition it here and just drag it up and that's fine because we're just trying to reposition it exactly where it needs to be. Now you may need to move this across so it slightly overlaps and that will help basically lining up these two layers. So something like that and then reposition it here so that you kind of get that jumping between those two layers. Now what I'm also going to do is take that paper background layer and just off center it. Because what we want is we want the paper background texture to sort of jump around with it. I'm gonna show you two ways to do this, but this is the way that I ended up doing mine. So if we just play through that, you can see we're kind of jump cutting between these two articles. Now the other idea that you can do here is if you basically just drag in a new paper background, just turn these ones off, you can basically scale this, scale this paper background layer up. And if I hit P on the keyboard, I'm gonna hit Option or Alt and paste in a wiggle expression. Now this is the exact wiggle expression that I'm using here, posterized time, bracket two, and then wiggle 10, 600. And what that does is it gives you that background that sort of jumps around as the animation's playing out. And you may have to scale this up. Now this is just another way of doing this sort of effect. You don't have to do it for this. 
I recommend just doing, you know, moving individually those layers in the background. But if you wanted to do that, that's how you do it. Now also, that sort of technique is something that I cover in my Animation Master course. So if you're interested in learning more about, you know, expressions or how to make different animations and animations similar to Vox and these newspaper effects, then definitely check out my Animation Master course. There'll be a link down in the description. I take you from absolute zero, never having used After Effects before, right through to showing you how to create some really cool animations and effects. For anyone that really wants to learn the fundamentals of animation and how you create these sort of animations from scratch, then definitely check out that course. It'll walk you through everything that you need to know so that you can walk away and start creating some of your own animations and rely less on the tutorials that are already out there. From this point, it's just a matter of rinse and repeat. You just keep repeating this process. So eventually you'll end up with something that looks like this, where the camera is sort of zooming in and you've got the articles that are going faster and faster and faster. Now, the other side of this is if you wanted to create your own titles. So I could just turn this one off, for instance, and what I could do is just type out my own text. So I could just say, like, we've landed on the moon here, scale this up, and this is exactly how you would do it. You would just basically create the same way but instead of dragging in the article, you just create your own layer of text. Make sure it's parented to that null object and then it'll follow that zoom as well. But this is sort of building on the last tutorial that I did of my newspaper effect. There'll be a, a link down in the description to that tutorial. And basically you just follow by creating the, that template first and then just replacing it in each of the sections. Now I recommend doing that if you don't wanna take the original articles or you wanna basically tweak the titles yourself and sort of lay it out to create your own sort of newspaper effect. That is another way of doing it, but it's probably gonna take you longer to do it that way than just using the original newspaper articles that you find online. Now the other side is doing the highlighter and then adding all of the texture effects over the top. So I added this highlighter effect, which sort of went over the moon to highlight it. So with my pen tool selected, I just wanna make sure I've got no fill. And then I'm going to select a stroke color, like a yellow here and really scale up the size. And then what I can do is just basically draw a line that goes across something like this. Now make sure that you've got nothing selected when you do that, it'll create this shape path. And then I'm gonna change the blending mode to be multiply and that'll create this effect. Now, if you need to scale this up in height, you can simply do that there. The other thing that I also did was I added a trims path. You can do that by selecting that down here, create one that sort of starts back here, a keyframe, and then sort of bring that up like that. Now, as the effect goes on, you may need to change that position. So you can also create a position keyframe here. And towards the end, you can sort of move this down, even scale it up if you need to. And that'll sort of keep it in line with highlighting that text if you've got a bit of drift towards the end or something like that. And the other thing I also did was I added the rough and edges effect to this. You can just find it by searching up here. And to this, these are the and these are the settings that I used up here. Now, what that does is just kind of give it a bit more of a highlighter effect. It's got a bit more sort of uneven edges, and that's what you you want. You don't want it to be perfect. You want it to be kind of a little bit like someone's highlighted it with a texture. The other thing I also have is a blur effect, which I've added over the top. Now, what you can do is if you right click and create a new adjustment layer drag this adjustment layer down. And to this, what I'm going to do is come up to effect, down to blur and sharpen, and, and just add a Gaussian blur, scale this up, and then I'm just gonna grab my rectangle tool and I wanna sort of draw a box which goes around that text layer, add a bit of a feather, invert this, and you can see we kind of get that effect sort of playing out like that. I don't even drag this up slightly. And you can also just add a animation to this blur layer. If I hit U, I can bring up all those keyframes. Start at zero and then slowly scale this on over time. It just kind of helps draw your eye in towards that text can make it look a bit more interesting. 
And the other thing I also did was I created a new adjustment layer here and I added some noise and grain that sort of sat over the top. This may be a little bit harder to see on your screen just because of the compression of the video, but I added some grain. You can just search for grain up here and then just add grain. These are the settings that I used here. The other thing was I turned the animation down to zero. If I just turn this on and off, it's very subtle, but it adds a little bit of detail sort of grain into this image. You don't have to add it in, but I recommend just adding this in. It looks nice to the finished effect. And the last thing I added was a texture mat, which sat over the top and it kind of gives it this scratch effect, which you can see here over the top. Now I got this image here by just searching for a texture mat, and then I can just drag this here on top. Now you won't be able to see through it because it's a solid layer. So we need to change this to be lighten the blending mode, and that will allow us then to see through that effect. Now you may find that the effect doesn't look exactly as you want. So what I did in my original here was I added a brightness and contrast to it and that will help just control or dial down that overall effect. So if you want less of it, just dial up on the contrast and then down on the brightness. And the other thing I also did was went to the position property I hit Option Alt to my keyboard, clicked on the stopwatch, and then pasted this expression in here. And basically all that does is just move that effect randomly around the screen. You may have to scale it up to make sure that it covers the entire screen as it moves around. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out my other newspaper effect. There'll be a link to that video here. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.